Hallelujah. And of course, because he said that, now I'm going to do something that I really don't do very often, haven't done it in a long time, um, and that's um, like expository preaching or expounding just on the Word, just on the Word. We've been reading, if you get your calendar every month, we have some things arranged here for you, just for you to, to be able to grow. If you, if you don't have clear direction on the path that you want to take for reading, we give you something to read every single day. We, but we just got finished reading Nehemiah and um, um, Daniel. We're in Daniel right now. But then up above here is a monthly reading. And we're supposed to be reading through James, James 1 through 5 for this month. And you can do it however you want to. You can do one a day and just keep flipping through, or you can do the seven chapters because there's Mark 15 and 16 we're finishing up from last month. But there's this just, you know, a guideline for you so you're in the word. And we're all, at, you know, and we're all on the same page. So it's, it's really kind of neat. So the Lord just really, I was, you know, trying to figure out, well, what would you have me to preach today, Lord? And it just kept coming to me, James. So James is a very practical book, isn't it? very practical for Christians, and it has so many different aspects in it, faith, trials, tribulations. We've been focusing on the basics a lot because we feel like that's, and it's it's been a kind of a constant theme all through Grace Fellowship because Pastor Jim has been saying the same thing. We have to focus on the basics at times, you know? And like Karen even said today, we're all in different seasons. You know, we haven't all gone through the same thing. We're, we're every, our lives are in a constant change, right? You know, each day his mercies are new and fresh for new challenges, right? For new, you know, new developments in our lives, new things coming forth, right? So we, we learn and we grow. And as we are sharing together, like I said, this just kind of is a roadmap for you to help you read more. Because what, how does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you word you get in, you know, even if you, there's been times when I have stopped and read something and then walked away and thought, you know what, I don't even remember what I read. I wasn't paying attention. So sometimes you just have to go back and stop and meditate. Read a few verses and meditate on those verses. That will help you retain that, you know. As a nurse, you know, I learned too, and as listening to one of my favorite um, teachers about things like that, learning and, and maintaining things and your brain power and all that is Dr. Carolyn Leaf. And she talks about different ways to train your brain. She's a neurophysicist. She talks about different ways to train your brain to retain. Because how many of you have done the same thing? Read something and then walked away and forgot what you read? Or walk, how, how about this? Walk into a room and forget while you're there? <laughs> I've done that, right? Right? But there's, there's things that we can do that will help us retrain our brain to, to maintain and to re, you know, be able to bring back what we remembered, what we read, what we heard, what we saw, you know, and utilizing all of our senses is one way to do that. When you read the words, you should read it out loud because you're training your brain to hear too, to hear it, your voice saying it, the word and everything. So let's get into James. And I'm gonna be, whoops, I'm gonna be preaching from my iPad and it's fairly, fairly new to me. So you'll have to forgive me if I get a little off track. Ashley's laughing at me. She's always trying to get me updated in technology, you know. <laughs> and Pastor Bob, too. He, he does his iPad all the time. I don't. But Okay. So I'm going to read out of the Passion, but I wanted to start out with some things that, you know, little, some little intricate things that, you know, sometimes you don't think about. Do you know that James was not really the name? In Hebrew, the name is Jacob. Now, see, you learned something today, didn't you? Or at least I did. You know, I didn't realize it. But it's Jacob. But see, that's some of the things that when you dig a little deeper, you find out other things when you read things. So in the Passion Translation, it starts out in, in, in the first chapter. And the subtitle, the heading is Faith and Wisdom, right? Because we're going to be going through the subtitles too. Faith and Wisdom. It says, greeting, my name is Jacob, and I'm a love slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm writing all the, to the, all the 12 tribes of Israel who have been sown as seeds among the nations. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity. Now listen to this closely. See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. See, you're changing your attitude. You're changing your focus when you, when you do that when you stop looking at what the circumstances are and you start looking at what God's saying. It says, when you're having a great trial though, you know, 
Think of it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can because you're victorious, right? You're more than conquerors, right? You, you beat everything. You are more than a conqueror. You're more than victorious. You have God Almighty on your side, right? So it stirs up power within you to endure all things. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. That's shalom, isn't it? Nothing missing, nothing lacking. And if anyone longs to be wise, this is verse 5, ask God for wisdom and he will give it. He won't see your lack of wisdom as an opportunity to scold you over your failures, but he will overwhelm your failures with his generous grace. Just make sure you ask empowered by confident faith without doubting that you will receive for the ambivalent person believes one minute and doubts the next. Now, how many of you have done that? You know, you're all fired up. You just, you come back from hearing a great sermon or you walk out the door from hearing a great sermon. You get in the parking lot and you forgot what somebody says, well, what did he preach on today? And you're like, um, <laughs> but you were all fired up a moment ago, right? You were into it a moment ago. And then what happens? <laughs> what does the enemy come to steal? He comes to steal the word. He comes to steal the word from you because he knows the word is what is important for you to get. He knows the word is what is going to get you through every situation. All through James, it talks about different situations. I'm not going to be able to get through all of them, but it's, it talks about every aspect of our lives. And I encourage you, if you haven't been reading James, read it this month. For the rest of this month, read all through James. They're very short chapters. You can do it. You, you've got it in you. You can do it. And if you have um, an audio Bible, you can listen to it on the way to work or on the way home or while doing housework. You can listen to it. You know, Just do it. Get more word in you. Get more of the, of the fundamentals that God has been teaching us. You know, um, Da, 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 da. One of the things that, one of the um, commentaries that I looked, it says most scholars don't believe that James, Jacob, who they say was Jesus' brother, don't believe that he was a believer until after Jesus died and rose again. So now imagine this, growing up with the Son of God. Growing up with the Son of God. Now I wonder if they bantered back and forth. I loved the passion when it showed Jesus kind of playing, playfully playing with his mom, you know, teasing her and stuff, you know. But I wonder if the, these brothers ever bantered back and forth. Because can you imagine growing up with the Son of God and not knowing it? Not knowing it. Yet what do we do today? Today, there's many are able to see the works of Jesus all around them and still remain unconvinced. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? They can see the wonders of God and the, and the beauty of Christ and the sacrifice that he made for us, but they don't, they don't realize it. They don't take it unto themselves. It says that he, he did have a powerful voice in the early church as the presiding apostle of the church at Jerusalem. And like his older brother, Jesus, he was also killed for his faith. And it's also said the book of Jacob or James and the book of Galatians are considered to be the first letters penned by the apostles most likely between A.D. 45 and 47. So when we read this letter, we are reading the earliest insights of the disciples of the first generation of followers of Christ, who were mostly Jews. He gives us practical truth about what it means to be declared righteous by God. We've had all kinds of powerful teaching on the righteousness of God, haven't we? Who we are in Christ and what God desires to see in us. Like, and he gives, you know, he gives us people to help us through. We're all a body because we are all so interconnected and we have to function as a body. Like Sharon shared, Pastor Bob called out the gift in her for, Matt, for leading the school. He called that gift out in her. He saw it. That's what we all need to be. We need to be, you know, I've, I say this a million times, I know. We come here in this church building to encourage, edify, and exhort one another. We don't come here to judge one another. We don't come here to, you know, to look up, look down on somebody that walks in these doors. Or we are here to edify, encourage, and comfort everybody that walks through those doors, right? That's what we're called to do. And then just something like that. He stepped out and called out the gift in her, and now she's flourishing in it. And she lives it. She lives it. She believes it, and she's living it. And that's what he wants us to all. He wants everyone to walk in their gift. 
Pastor Bob has said thousands of times, you know, every single one of you has a gift. You might not think you have a gift, but every single one of you has a gift, a gift from God himself that he desires you to use. You know, it could be just operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, giving words of wisdom, words of knowledge, you know, all those different things, giving prophecy. You know, I want to see us stepping out in every single aspect of what God has for us, right? Okay, and then it says James gives us practical truth about what it means to be declared righteous. He gives us clear insights on faith and walking in the truth. You might want to view this book as the New Testament version of Proverbs. For much of his writings speak of God's heavenly wisdom that can transform us. And that's what's going to transform us, right? The love of God. The love of God. Hallelujah. So um, in verse, let's see, in verse 17, it says, Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow of darkness and is never subject to change. God was delighted to give us birth by the truth of his infallible word so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favorite ones out of all of his creation. We are the favorite one. I'm his favorite. I don't know about you, but I know I'm his favorite. So we have, you know, we have something. You can have something to strive for. You can strive to be a favorite like me, right? <laughs> I'm just teasing, but that's the way we should all feel. We should all feel that intense love from God that we're his favorite, that we're so, every aspect of our life is so vitally important to him because it is. Every single aspect of our lives, you know, the hairs on your head, you know, I know some of your, the hairs on your head are getting a little bit fewer. I've got some. Okay. I have a joke for today. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What do you call, when someone has a problem with their appendix, what do you call it? Appendicitis. Someone has uh, a tonsil issue, what do you call Tonsillitis. What do you call something when someone has a, a, something growing on their head? Folliculitis. What did you say? <laughs> hair? hair? You got it close. Hair cut. Hair cut. See? See? It was a can of Copeland joke. Uh, I think you messed it up because when it came through your lips, it didn't have the same. Uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it won't enlarge. I need it to enlarge. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> The, some of the verses that I just read, you know, in James, it says, Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So what does that mean? Be doers only. Be doers of the word, not just hearing only. How many times have you heard something specifically from God? Go share this with someone. Go take care of this. Go minister to that person. And you're like, oh, that's just me. Or, God, I don't feel qualified. Or any of those things, you know? No. No. If it's from God, you need to step out, right? Step out and do what he says to do. Um, and these are all practical things. You know, sometimes we, this is an election year, and boy, can things get out of hand, can't they? Even us as Christians, you know, somebody will make a comment on, on a post, you know, and, you know, it irritates you. However you want to say it, it irritates you because they, they, you know, try to ridicule what you said or whatever, you know. And you can get angry, can't you? Think about that. That's just a tool of the enemy. Because we're not, like he said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities that are that are really truly deceiving those that are believing, you know, believing things like it's okay to vote for someone that is going to going to open up abortion again. It's okay to vote for someone that would do that. That's just contrary to the word of God, and, and it's mind-boggling to myself to hear something like that that they think that's okay, you know. But we can't allow that, you know. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce righteousness of God. So you got to control yourself, right? Right now we've got, 
all of us probably have to use self-restraint right now, you know, and say, okay, Lord, I won't say a word. <laughs> yeah, Hank has some people that drive by his house, um, and he has, you know, some, has a little bit of Trump paraphernalia in his yard and, and flags and stuff, and they've been harassing him, you know, saluting him with the middle finger and, you know, things like that. So they're harassing him because of what he believes, you know. So he's having to he's having to learn restraint, you know. He's having to learn slow to speak. Why does why do you think he says slow to speak? Aren't what? Exactly, exactly. You know, sometimes our mouth wants to operate before our brain has really checked in to saying it was okay, you know. Yeah, that's exactly right. We need to understand that God desires us to share the word. He doesn't desire us to share our political view. He desires us to share the word and share that the people that are we're voting for most closely line up to what the word says. And that's what we are, we've, we've devoted ourselves to, right? Because we believe in the, in the things that are important to God and we have to line up with those, right? So, okay. Um, because if you don't that, if you do that, you know, it says you must, you must be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. You're deceiving yourself. You know, what does it profit my brother? And someone says he has faith, but does not have work. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things that are needed for the body. What does that profit? Thus also by faith by itself is not have works is dead. So we don't, we're not saved by works, right? We're not saved by works. We're saved because we accept Jesus Christ, right? But then we do works out of a grateful heart, right? We do works out of what God, be, uh, we're so grateful. This whole complex here, this, this building, the, build, the house on the other side and the house on this side were given to us. We have so much to be thankful for. Every time I walk in this building, I'm, um, I'm in awe sometimes. It's just like, I can't believe this has really happened. And it, but it has, because that's the goodness of God. And he desires us to, to, to verbalize that with people and show the people the goodness of God and share the goodness of God. Right now, there are, people are going through so many things because they're not sure. They're, you know, it's a time of doubt. It's a time, we don't know where our country's going to be in a month, you know. We really don't know where our country's going to be, you know, in the next couple of months. You know, we have, um, well, I won't get more political, sorry. Okay. All right. So, my dear, in verse 19, it says, My dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak, and be slow to become angry. This is in the Passion I'm reading it out of. For human anger is never a legitimate tool to promote God's righteous purpose. It's never a, one of God's tools. It's not. Human anger is never a legitimate tool. When you get angry when you're talking about something, then you need to stop and take some time and meditate on what you're saying and what you're doing. It never is, will promote God's righteous purpose. So this is why we abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. Instead, with a sensitive spirit, we absorb God's word, which has been planted within our nature, for the word of life has power to continually deliver us. It can keep us out of danger. It can keep us out of all those different things that we've been struggling with, right? Ah, I did it again. No. Be patient with me, please. Okay. There we go. So we've learned so far about righteousness. We've learned about, you know, keeping our mouth, you know, all these different things are basics that just are in James. This is, I'm just reading out of James. I'm just reading some commentaries that went along with it, but I'm just reading out of James. All these little tidbits of advice, you know, it's a powerful book, but it gives us all these different things about how to live, how to function, how to do what God tells us to do in a proper manner. We can refute the evil in the world, but we don't fight against the people that are, that are doing it, right? What we want to see is those people come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's where God is glorified, right? When he sees us acting the way we should, he blesses us and we are able to, and he prepares their heart. They have to, the heart has to be prepared, you know, to receive. So he does that for us. Hmm? 
That's right. That's right. That every one of us was there at one point in time in our life. You know, even if we were saved when we were young, we still had doubts and things through the years and, and didn't understand a lot of stuff, right? It says, don't just, in verse 22, 122, it says, don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it. For that is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. So when we're sharing, you know, you know, our, our views of anything, it should become as poetry. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Because maybe you're not a fan of poetry, but there's something about poetry, the, the you know, the, the lists and the, uh, you know, all the different things. It's so beautiful and sometimes it just, it's, you know, it takes you to a different place when you listen to somebody that is, can express in artistic manner a picture or whatever with poetry. So it says, so always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life, your life. Are you becoming somebody that brings peace, that brings, like that song we sang, and I just saw that scripture, I can't remember what the scripture is about honey from the rock. I just read that scripture, I thought, oh, there's that scripture that song's based on, there's honey in the rock, you know? And I just read it, but do, are we sweet as honey when we're, when we're sharing the Lord with people, or when we're out in public, when we're, when we're just being ourselves that day, when you're working at your workplace, when you're cutting hair, when you're, you know, doing whatever it is you do, are, you, as, are your words like honey? Are they sweet to their satisfy, to satisfy their soul? Are they sweet to bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ? You know, honey is sweet. And, you know, they say, you know, they've done so many studies on honey. Honey, you know, never expires, I guess. I didn't know that, but honey never expires. And that's what our words should never expire, but they should be, sat, they should be coated with that honey of the word. Our words should be coated with the honey of the word. So we are bringing sweetness to their, to their soul so that they're able to understand and then someday may, you know, a lot of times you don't get to see the, the, the final product, but if you've planted seeds, you have part in that harvest, right? When they get become, when they give their life, when they give their life to the Lord, you become one that helped lead them there. Whether you said a sinner's prayer with them or not, you still had a part in it. You planted seed. And we need to think about that, that, uh, that our seed should be more like honey. It should be, you know, even if we disagree with them or they, you know, they might laugh in your face, you know, they might, you're, you're trying to share the Lord with them and, and, and that's all right. I, you know, Ashley and I had that experience not too awfully long ago. We were sharing with a young woman and she just laughed in my face, you know, and giggled and, and, it was okay because I don't, you know, she doesn't understand. I understand the word went forth and seed, the word seed demands a harvest and that harvest will come in her life. Whether she realizes or not, there was power in the words that I spoke to her because it was the word of God and it will change her life and she'll be able to open her eyes and see one day simply because of the, us being careful and planting the word. You know, I didn't let it rile me. I didn't let it offend me. You know, I just wanted to get the word into her. I wanted her to know that Jesus can make everything different in her life, right? So, all right. In verse 23, it says, if you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like a person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do, all that they do. So I love that. I love that part of scripture because it's so, it's so important. You know, we look in the mirror to discover who we are. God looks at us through the reflection of the word. He looks at it through the promises of him, that he's made to us, and he sees us totally different. Whenever he looks at us, he sees us totally different, right? He sees us as we are, as he created us to be, not in the situation that we're in. We've all had things in our past that they aren't, we aren't real proud about, right? And we've been delivered from those. That we're not that person anymore. We have no past anymore because we became a new creation when we accepted Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They experience, okay, 
But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. If someone believes they have a relationship with God but fails to guard his words and then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty, true spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of orphans and widows and their troubles and refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. That's where we as Christians have to draw the line, isn't it? World values. What the world sees is important. We don't. We don't agree. We love, I mean, this transgender and all of this woke stuff, you know, we don't, these, those are values of the world. And boy, is it getting bad out there. It gets worse every day. You hear something mind boggling even more, you know, every day you hear stupid things that are going on that people think are okay. But it's, it's the word. It's the word that says they'll call good evil and evil good. And that's exactly what they're doing now. They're calling evil good. And we have, to have, we have to have knowledge of this word in order to combat that. And we have to stand on this word. We cannot, you know, they try to make us sound like we're, you know, such hateful people because we don't believe that homosexuality is right. We don't believe that, you know, that children can make a decision to change their sex. You know, we don't believe in any of those things. So they try to make us out to be, you know, intolerant. You know, they say bad things about us. We truly, if you... If, you, if they could just see our heart, they would understand. We want them delivered from those things because it's not God's right. It's not God's perfect will for their life, right? It doesn't matter what they think. It's what God says about who they are. It's to, all of this stuff is, is totally one thing in mind. They want to destroy the image of God because we were made in the image of God. Each one of us was made in the image of God. And they want to destroy people's image of themselves. So they put those little lies in all over the place. James talks about being, you know, pure and, and understanding, you know, be, and, you know the, the thing that he said to do, you know, help people, widows, orphans, refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. We have to make our voice known. We can't stay, you know, like Pastor Bob said, for so many years, the church has just let things go by. First, the church, one of the first things I remember was the church, you know, said that TV was evil, you know. Oh, it's so evil, you know, you, you can't believe what, you know, goes on. on the and so the, the church, the music, same thing. And the church shied away from using things like that. Using media, you know, oh, it's evil, you know. So the church shied away instead of putting the word into it, you know, what we should have been doing, putting the word into all of those things. And now we do have a lot of Christian television, Christian radio, all those things that are being supported now. And we're growing because of that. But we don't, we can't come to the point where we can't, we start pointing fingers at people. Well, you did this or you did that. That doesn't work. You know, we have to become that people that understands the word and moves on the word itself, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. All right. Just one more thing here. In, ver in chapter 2, it says at the very beginning, My dear brothers and sisters, fellow believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, how could we say that we have faith in him and yet we favor one group of people above another? And then it just talks. You've read this story. It talks about, you know, some influential person comes in the church and you just woo and wow over them, you know. But then somebody comes in that doesn't smell real good or doesn't dress real nice, you, you avoid, right? That's ungodly because he, you know, we should be reaching out to everybody regardless of social status or however you want to say it. So these are all, like I said, James just has so much practicality for us as believers. You know, um, we don't, you know, I, there was a, a church, I, guess, I, I think I saw this on Facebook and he probably heard it too, that a, a, a guy, a homeless man sat on the church steps, you know, of this church and people, you know, said, you need to move out of the way. You're sitting in front of our church. You know, we're real mean to him, you know. And then he had the audacity to show up in the church building, you know. And he sat on the front row. And then all these people are whispering, look at him, he stinks. Or, you know, being mean, you know. What's he doing here? You know, da 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 Then come to find out, guess what? It was the new pastor that they were interviewing. <laughs> So the new pastor got a real good lesson on the body that he was about to minister to, right? Because he, he disguised himself just to see. And then they, they did all that. So then, I mean, there was lots of tears that day, I'm sure, of repentance, I hope. 
because you never know. Even the word itself says you never know when you entertain angels unaware, right? Do you think all those angels are beautiful and just breathtaking? And no, I think sometimes they're 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 wrapped in a different kind of a package. And that's why we have to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? To understand what we're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, so listen carefully in verse 5 of chapter 2. It says, listen carefully, my dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God cho chosen the poor in the world's eyes to be those who are rich in faith? And won't they be the heirs of the kingdom realm he promised to those who love him? But yet you insult and shun the poor in your efforts to impress the rich. Isn't it the wealthy who exploit you and drag you into court? Aren't court? And aren't they the very ones who blaspheme the beautiful name of the one you know you belong to? Your calling is to fulfill the rule, is to fulfill, phew, is to fulfill the royal law of love as given to us in his scripture. You must love and value your neighbors as you love and value yourself. We've heard that a thousand times, right? Love your neighbor as yourself and stuff. But do you really understand what that means? You know, that means that you unconditionally love them. You don't take offense, you know. You have the desire in your heart to see them serve God, right? To become who God intends them to be, right? So. Da, 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 da. My dear, in verse 14, my dear brothers and sisters, what good is it if someone claims to have faith but demonstrates no good works to prove it? How could this kind of faith save anyone? For example, if a brother or sister in the faith is poorly clothed and hungry and you leave them saying goodbye, I hope you stay warm and have plenty to eat, but you don't provide them with a coat or even a cup of soup. What good is your faith? So then faith that doesn't involve action is phony. So everything we do, James is telling us, Jacob is telling us, to, to monitor ourselves, basically, all through this, he's telling us to monitor ourselves, to, to understand who God desires us to be, to understand how to minister to people. If you want a little book that you can get through quickly that tells you how to behave, basically, gives you fundamentals of who you are in Christ and what, how you should act, James is that, that book. Each chapter has a different focus, you know. Each chapter has something for you to understand in it. And like I said, this I don't very do often do expository preaching. That's just reading the word and, and just going over the word and stuff. So it's been a little awkward even for me, you know, to, to get in my groove or whatever you want to say, because I'm not used to doing this. But it's amazing when you get into the rule, get into the written word of God and understand every single bit is meant for us today. It's not that it was written all those years ago for someone else. It's all to pertain to us today so that we understand the power that we have. And James helps through trials and tribulations to, to, to not, you know, I mean, think of all the little tidbits I've just given you about different things. You know, don't judge somebody by their appearance. You know, be kind of pure joy when you endure various trials because something great is happening. Perfection in you is happening when you do that. When even when you're in a trial, when you stop and say, I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you that the, the you know, that you're, you're here. You're taking care of this. You're, oh, I'm going to get through this, you know, instead of, you know, murmuring, you know, Philippians, put it 2.14. I can do all things. I do all things without murmuring and complaining, you know. Have you ever murmured a little bit? Somebody's driving, not behind Kim, but somebody might be driving a little slow down the highway. <laughs> yeah. Grandma Betty? No. I, I was in Morton one day when she was still working. She worked at the Apostolic Christian Home, you know, and taught them art and, and made projects with them and stuff. And I saw her car go by as I came up to a stop sign. I saw her car go by and I thought, I'll just, you know, follow her and say hi, you know. I'm not kidding. She put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boom, there she goes. Oh, but, you know, you can get impatient with somebody that's going a little too slow or not doing something right. Or, you know, Pastor Bob has made it his his mission in life. One of his missions in life is when we're in the grocery store or somebody, at, wherever we're in our line, anywhere, paying for something and somebody's being rude to the person that's checking them out. You think his jokes are bad here. You should hear some of the ones he tries to bring a smile to somebody's face then, you know. <laughs> Oh, 
But those are, these are, I just gave you a few tidbits and I wanted to get a lot farther into James, but I want us to have time for communion and to, to get into the presence of God again. So I'm just leaving that. Now think about just the, for the first two chapters, all those little tidbits that are in there. Now read the rest of it and see, because it all ties in and it all is helpful to us. You know, we say we stand on the word of God. You have to know it really well to stand on it. That's why we have this, you know, our readings. Well, I put this in there originally, and this has been going on for several years because someone challenged me to read seven chapters a day of the Word every day. And so I challenged you then to do the same thing. Read seven chapters every day. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that. Now, I'm saying you can read, you know, couple, James 1 through 3 one day and then, then, then the rest of it the next day or whatever, however you want to do it. But I know one of the main secrets of getting you built up is the Word. Get, I mean, we know all the other things, prayer, fellowship, all of those things are important, but the word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and hearing, you know, being in fellowship, you know, there's so many times that the enemy wants to keep you out of church because he's got somebody there to give you a word, a word of encouragement or to give, get something to you. That's why he doesn't want you here, right? 